Okay, okay, okay. Hello there. Magandang araw sa inyo. So, uh, ito na ang ating last lecture video for this, ano, for this, tawag ito? For this subject, obligo, obligation, pero of course, for the midterms. Kasi after nito, next week, midterm exam nyo na. So, tatapusin na natin dito yung lesson natin for obligation. Now, take note, reminder lang ulit mga kapatid, nasa Thursday, 10.30am to 12pm, short quiz nyo sa ano, sa... CFAS, Conceptual Framework, and pagkahapon, long quiz sa Oblicon, mga 1pm to 3pm, okay? Thursday yan, huwag ka kalimutan. So with that, let's start with our discussion with obligations sa chapter, ano to? Chapter, chapter 4, section 3. Kasi natapos natin ang section 1, which is payment or performance, and yung section 2 is loss of the thing due. So dito ngayon tayo sa Extinguishment of Obligation, Section 3, Condonation or Remission of Debt. So, dito. Ako, uh, dito to Section 3. Ako, sabi ni Article 1270, Condonation or Remission is essentially gratuitous and requires acceptance by the obligor. So, it may be made expressly or impliedly. One and the other kind shall be subject to the rules which governs in officious donations. Express condonation shall furthermore comply with the forms of donation. So, ano nga ba tong condonation or remission? Ito yung meaning nga sabi ni Book. Ang condonation or remission, ito yung gratuitous abandonment by the creditor in his right against the debtor. So, it is a form of donation. Kasi meaning ng gratuitous, ano nga ba? It means na, uh, it is, tawag dito, Parang may binigay ka nang wala kang hinihinging kapalit. Di ba? Kasi ang onerous, kailangan may exchange kayong dalawa. Pero sa gratuitous, may binigay ka nang walang hinihinging kapalit. Oo, libre mo lang binigay. Free giveaway, kumbaga. Sa kaya, kinoconsider siya sa form of donation. Kasi nga, di ba? Creditor, debtor. Si debtor, may obligation sa'yo. So, may bibigay, maano sa'yo, di ba? Then, uh, nirem, uh, niremission mo yung utang ni debtor sa'yo. So basically, parang nag-donate ka na lang sa kanya. So ang remission, condonation, pagpapatawad ng utang, di ba? Tawag dyan, or it is a form of donation. So anong mga requisites ng condonation or remission? Di ba? Condone, remit, remiss, di ba? Una, it must be gratuitous. Dapat kusang loob mo yung binigay. Dapat, oh, like, free giveaway. Out of your own free will, hindi ka dapat pinilit. It must be gratuitous. Second, it must be accepted by the obligor. Kasi ganyan sa donation class. Pagdating nyo sa, ano, sa, tawag ito? Anong subject yun? Hmm. Uh, ano, wait lang na. Kalimutan ko. Anong subject yun? Sa business, ah, transfer tax. Sa business and transfer tax, yun. Doon yung madidi, ma, mas madidiscuss sa inyo yung nature ng donation. O, doon sa business and transfer tax. Kasi may tinatawag tayong estate and donors tax. So, doon yung madidiscuss sa inyo yung nature ng Donation. Pero basically, ang donation, kailangan mo ng, kailangan ng acceptance dyan ni Doni, yung bibigyan mo. Kasi pag wala yung acceptance, then it cannot be considered a donation. Now, eh, dito, di ba sabi ang condonation remission is a form of donation. So, hindi siya magiging fully fulfilled kapag walang acceptance ni Doni or ni Obligor in this case. The parties must have the capacity to effect the donation made. Di ba? Dapat capacitated sila. Pangapat na requisites, it must not be inofficious. Ano mean ng inofficious? Basically, ang mean ng inofficious is excess donation or in such a way na hindi na siya narapat. Parang sobra ba? Oo, kasi di ba may definition dito si inofficious. So. While a person may make donations, no one can give more than what his can give by will. Meaning wag sobrahan. It is already against the teachings of a moral obligation inofficious, parang nasobrahan na. Yan yung meaning niya. And, pang limang requisite, it may be, if made expressly, then it must comply with the forms of donation. So, yun yung mga requisites. Ito, madali lang naman to section 3, pati section 4, kung titingnan nyo yung pages sa book. Di ba? Madali lang. Uh, tawag dito. Maikli lang siya, di ba? Kasi madali lang to sila. Ngayon yung mga kinds of permission as to extent, whether full or uh, complete or partial, from the word itself, complete, Remission or partial lang does not cover the entire obligation. At as to, as to its form, express, di ba? Implied, 
and as to its effectivity, intervivos and mortis causa. Ito, itong intervivos, mortis causa sa business and transfer, transfer tax ito mong pagdadaan under sa do, donation. Itong intervivos, it is a donation that is, uh, it, it takes effect during the lifetime of the donor. Mm-mm. Etong mortis causa, pamdano, opposite intervivos kapag patay na si donor, tsaka lang magte-take effect. Ah, uh, etong tao ano etong ano ni mortis causa, basically in contemplation. The donation, the donation was made in contemplation of death. Yan yung nature niya. Kaya siya sabi dito, ang reason bakit may bibigay yan kasi mamamatay ka na. ini-expect mo nang mamamatay ka. So, nagsulat ka ng will, ganun. Pero don't worry, pagdating yung sa business transfer tax, may explain yung ano yan, no? mas in-depth yung discussion dyan. Taxation yan eh. Pero ganun, so ganito lang muna i-focus yung sa donation. Yeah? So, ito, effect of inofficious donation, gaya sabi natin dito, bawal lang inofficious kasi it is already against a moral obligation, parang sobra na, hindi na tama, na ito lang yung kanyang ibigay, yung pwede niyang ibigay out of, out of his own free will pero nasobrahan. So pag inofficious na yan, hindi na pwede. Kasi bakit? Kasi kung inofficious yan, hindi maganda ang magiging effect yan kay donor. Oo, mag, mag, magdodonate na nga siya, gugulangan nyo pa. Di ba? Hindi ganun pwede. Pangit naman ganun, di ba? So dapat hindi inofficious. Now let's go to Article 1271. Tapos makikita sa book nyo, may mga legitim dyan, compulsory heirs, business, la, business and transfer tax. Business and transfer tax yan. So, let's go to article 1271. So, madali lang to sila eh. The delivery of a private document evidencing a credit made voluntarily by the creditor to the debtor implies daw that the creditor has, renoun- has renounced no, the renunciation of the action which, former, which the former had against the latter. So, basically, uh, may... Uh, Paragraph 2 pa pala. So, in paragraph 2, if in order to nullify this waiver, it should be claimed to be inofficious. The debtor and his heirs may uphold it by proving that the delivery of the document was made in virtue of payment of debt. So, basically, nagkakaroon dito ng presumption. Nagkakaroon ng presumption ng implied remission. Bakit? Kasi, as you can see, di ba? Example, may note ka. And that note evidences the obligation of the debtor to pay the creditor. Di ba? May note ka. Saan dito? O, oh, ikaw si creditor. May hawak-hawak kang note, di ba? Itong note mo, hawak-hawak mo. No, sabi natin note receivable. Ngayon, kapag itong note mo, ibibigay mo kay debtor, anong meaning yan? Eh, alam naman natin itong note mo, itong document na to, itong contract na to, serves as an evidence to the obligation of debtor to you. Ngayon, siyempre hawak-hawak mo yan para may, pat, para may ebidensya ka ka, di ba? Ngayon, kapag diniliver mo yan, binigay mo yan ng kusa kay debtor, ano ang assumption? Ibig sabihin, wala na, in, uh, wala na siyang utang sa'yo, di ba? Kasi diniliver mo na ng kusa sa kanya eh. So, anong assumption mo dyan? Anong presumption nyo? Na, extinguish na yung utang, yung obligation ni debtor sa'yo. But take note, Take note. That is only a presumption. And for every presumption, you can always rebut it. Oo, you can always present contrary evidence na, Uy, just because I delivered it to the, de- to the debtor, that's not necessarily mean na may inextinguish ko na yung utang niya sa akin. No. Baka may certain reasons kung bakit diniliver ng kusa ni creditor kay debtor yung evidence ng pagkakautang niya sa kanya. Like for example, yun dito sa book oh, Uh, evidence is admissible to show otherwise as when a receipt signed by the creditor was delivered for the purpose of making the lawyer of the debtor examine the document. Teka, oh, sige, sige, pa, uh, pahiram ko lang sa inyo to, oh, para ma-examine ng abogado mo yung utang mo sa akin. Di ba ganun? Oh, di ba? Contrary evidence, it is always rebatable. Kaya nga tawag yung presumption lang. Ngayon, extent of remission, if the obligation is joint, Presumption of remission pertains only to share auto. Di ba may joint and solidary obligation tayo, di ba? Ngayon, ganito yan. May explanation nito later, di ba? 
Na ngayon ko lang sabihin para dali. So di ba? Pag join ah uh, pag ang joint obligation to or ang uh, joint and solidary obligation basically two or more creditors, di ba? Or to end or two or more debtors, di ba? Ganun yun siya. So let's say debtor 1 Excuse me po, debtor 2, debtor 3. And sabihin natin si creditor 1, ba? 2 or more debtors and or 2 or more creditors, creditor 3. So may utang na 9K. So let's say joint obligation, to, to 3K sila each, da? 3K. Ngayon, kapag itong si ano, joint to ha, joint. Ngayon, kapag itong si... Creditor 1, pinatawad yung utang niya, no? Ni debtor 1, diba? Oo. Condonation or remission. Since this is a joint obligation, yung share lang ni debtor 3, yung, ah, kung pa, kapag pinatawad ni creditor 1, kinondon niya, diba? Yung utang ni debtor 3. Then, si debtor 3 lang. Oo. Yung share lang ni debtor 3 sa pambayad niya kay creditor 1, yung, ano, yung tawag dito, yung mareremis yung ma-extinguish so di ba 3k 3k to sila so meaning 1k 1k yung utang nila for each di ba for each creditor di ba ganyan sa ganyan, ganyan sa joint obligation di ba yung share mo lang sa utang yung obligation mo for the debtor sa creditor yung pwede mo lang i-demand is yung share mo sa utang na itong sa creditor 1 may crash kay debtor 3 so since may crash kay debtor 3 Kinondo niya yung utang ni debtor 3 sa kanya. Kinondo niya yung utang ni debtor 3 sa kanya. Yung 1K lang. But take note, yan lang yung, yan lang yung ma-extinguish. Oo, yung share lang ni creditor 1 kay debtor 3. Kasi siya yun yung pinatawad niya. Yan yung nature ng joint obligation, di ba? So, kailangan mo yun yung ano, no? Yung utang ni debtor 3 kay creditor 2 and 3, goods lang yan. Hindi yan maapektuhan. Kay creditor Kay, kay creditor 1 lang. Yan yung joint obligation. Di ba? Share lang nila yung ma-extinguish. Ngayon, on the other hand, kapag joint yan, di ba? Pag, ah, pag joint. Kapag solidary obligation yan, to solidary tayo. Di ba? Ah, simplihan lang natin. Debtor 1 and debtor 2 na lang. And creditor 1, creditor 2. So dito, Diba? Ano ang nature ng solidary obligation? Each debtor is liable for the entire obligation. Diba yan yung nature ng solidary obligation? Each debtor is liable for the entire obligation. To which each creditor is entitled for the entire, uh, entire obligation rin. Kasi ngayon yung solidary. Solidary sila eh. Nag-iisa. So in that case, kapag pinatawad ni creditor 1 yung utang Oh, sabi ko, oh, debtor 1, huwag ka namang bayad. Goods na tayo dyan. Oh, condone or remission. Di ba? Pag ganyan yung nangyari, then the entire obligation, goods na. Oo, oh, oh, extinguish na yan. Bakit? Solidary obligation yung kapatid eh. Solidary obligation. So, pag ganyan yung nangyari, pinatawad niya, no? Ni... Ito ha? Creditor 2 to ha? Creditor 2. Kapag pinatawad ni creditor 1 yung utang kay D1, then entire obligation is extinguished because each debtor is liable for the entire obligation. Now, sir, paano si creditor 2? Kawawa naman siya. Si creditor 1 lang yung nagbayad. Na, tapos ah, nag-condone. Tapos buong obligation na ang extinguish. In this case, creditor 2 can ask creditor 1 for reimbursement. Uh, not this reimbursement. Oh, reimbursement. Oh, hingi siya. Uy, loko ka creditor 1. Ah. Bakit mo biglang pinatawad? pinatawad yung utang, reimburse. Di ba? Loko ka. Bakit mo pinatawad yung utang? O, hingi sa reimbursement. Bayaran mo ako for my share. Ganon, di ba? Kasi baka pinatawad ni utang yung, ni creditor 1 yung utang kasi crash na si D1, di ba? So, sabi ni creditor 2, loko ka. Dahil crash mo lang, pinatawad mo ng utang. Ah, walang ganyanan. Reimburse mo ako. Oo. Hindi niya na pwedeng habulin siya, no? Hindi niya na pwedeng habulin to. Oo. Bakit? Pinatawad ni Creditor 1 eh. Bakit niya bully niya? Wala namang ginawa yan si Creditor 1 yung may ano eh, may sala dyan eh. O kaya si Creditor 1 lang yung habulin niya. Ganyan sa ano, condonation and remission or basically any form of extinguishment. Sa joint, basically, yung share lang. Yung share lang nila. Huwag mo idama yung iba. 
Oh, wala naman sila labot diyan eh. Pero dito, entire obligation yung liability, entire obligation yung entitlement. Then kapag nagkaroon ng patawa ah, ng condonation, patawad ng utang, okay. Entire obligation 'yan, Re- subject to reimbursement. Oh, ganyan 'yan. And to yung presumption applicable only to private document. Yung private document ay presumption. Bakit? Kasi pag public document yan, easily accessible. Oh, like po sabo, eh, sab- sabi ni ano, ni Deto, eh, dito nga sa akin yung ano, yung, yung evidence ng ano, ng, ng ano, so, ah, tag ito. Nandito nga sa akin yung evidence ng pagkakautang ko sa kanya. Ibig sabihin, bayad na to. Eh, public document yun. Madali lang makakuha ng public document, di ba? So, private document ang applicable to. Payment not remission of, under second paragraph, the renunciation of the action which the creditor had against the debtor may, nal- be, may be nullified or invalidated by showing that the waiver is in of issues, etc., etc. So, Article 1272, whenever the private document in which the debt appears is found in the possession of the debtor, it shall be presumed that the creditor delivered it voluntarily unless the contrary is proved. Okay, basically, ganun lang yun eh. Num- uh, 1273, the renunciation of the principal debt shall extinguish the accessory obligations but the waiver of the latter shall leave the former. So basically, di ba ang rule dyan is the, pre- the accessory obligation always follows the principal. Di ba? Or the, simple natin, the accessory always follows the principal. So kapag na-extinguish yung accessory, wala yung effect sa kay principal. Pero kapag si principal yung na-extinguish, sasama na yan si accessory. Ganun lang yung rule dyan. 1274, it is presumed that the accessory obligation of pledge has been remitted when the thing pledged after its delivery to the creditor is found in the possession of the debtor or of the third person owns the thing. So, simple-simple lang yan. Yung, yung pledge lang yung ano, yung next thing wish, pero yung primary obligation, nandyan pa rin. So, ganyan lang kasimple siya, ano, di ba? Si condonation remission of debt. Patawad, oh, nagpatawad ka lang ng utang, basically naging donation. Okay, let's go to the next. So, dito ngayon tayo sa section 4, which is confusion or merger of rights. Diba merger yun yung pinapatay mo? <laughs> so, section 4 tayo. So, Article 1275. The obligation is extinguished from the time the characters of creditor and debtor are merged into the same first person. So, ano meaning yan, sir? Like, nag-combine talaga sila? Nag-fusion sila? Parang si Goku, pati, ah, parang si Gohan, pati si Goten? Hindi. Ang meaning lang yung character nila, but not themselves, di ba? So, confusion or merger is the meeting of, or is the meeting in one person of the qualities of creditor and debtor with respect to the same obligation. Meaning, yung debtor naging creditor of himself. Ikaw yung debtor, ikaw rin yung creditor naging iisa yung personality nila. Pa, paano niya nangyari? Nandito naman yung explanation. And as you can see, may key lang rin si confusion or merger pledge kasi madali rin to. So, the law, oh, reasons on or basis of for confusion. So, mga rason lang ng batas kung bakit inaalaw yung extinguishment ng obligation when it is confusion or merger. <coughs> the law treats confusion or merger as a mode of extinguishing obligations. Why? Because if a debtor is his own creditor, meaning is, nag-isa ka, di ba? Ikaw yung debtor at ikaw yung creditor ng sarili mo. Enforcement of the obligation becomes absurd since a person cannot claim payment for himself. Ano, ano yan, may double personality ka? Kakausapin mo sarili mo, ay debtor. Bero mo utang mo. Eh, sabi mo, ayaw ko, ayaw ko, bero mo utang ko. Bahala, sige, susubukin kita sa batas. Sige, sige, susubukin mo ko sa batas. Iba po parang kaya kita. Hindi naman ganun pwede, di ba? Parang kalakohan naman yun. So, sabi dito, that is absurd extinguish mo na lang. Oo, oh, wag na uh, wag na pahaba pahabain pang usapan, di ba? Pangalawa, furthermore, when there is a confusion of rights, the purposes for which the obligation may have been created are deemed to be realized. Kasi parang nabawi na ni creditor debtor on himself, di ba? Kasi nag-merge na sa si isang personality yung characteristics nila. So anong requisites ng ano, confusion? Dalawa lang. It must take place between the principal debt and the creditor and it must be Complete. Ito, may mga examples tayo dito, di ba? Hmm? Pero basically, anong itsura niyan? Kaya ito lang yung kasimple. O, oh, di ba? Ito, may utang kay C. O, oh, si C naman may utang kay A. Si A may utang kay B. Kung saan si B may utang kay E. Kung saan si E nag-utang kay D. So, tandan, dan, 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 extinguish. Ganyan lang, kasimple si 
confusion or merger. Oo. Pa, utang-utang pa sa pasahan, dang, 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 dang. At ang makita nyo dito sa book, nilalagyan na lang ng konting ano yan eh. Ng mga konting expe- uh, specialties, like mga promissory note, or mga indoors-indoors, yung mga ano, di ba? Liability, liability. Like, for example, dito, example. The O's, C, 10,000 pesos, for which the executed a promissory note. Nag-promissory note si kapatid. So, di ba? The O's. Ten tao, oh, kung saan, promissory note, di ba po, yan, promissory note. Uh, in favor of C, nga, C, 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 in-endorse yung note kay E. O, oh, endorse, endorse lang note siya, endorse. Kung saan, etong si E, uh, in-endorse kay F. Okay, in-endorse yung note kay F. O, oh, in-endorse, endorsement yan, o, oh, yun, no. Hindi yung endorsement sa TV, ah. sa negotin pa yan. Pero wala naman kayo negotin eh. Pero yung basic ID, malaman nyo lang. Ngayon, si F, bumili ng goods kay D. Bumili ng goods kay D. Buy goods. Ngayon, nakita niya, alam, uh, ngayon, alam niya, na si D yung may pagkakautang based on the note. Nakita niya, ah, si D pala yung ano, yung magbabayad ng utang nito. So, instead na, bigyan ko siya ng cash, isa ulit ko na lang tong, oo, i-deliver ko na lang tong note niya, Para quits na kami. Oo, wala na siyang utang. Ba, yun na yung bayad sa goods na binili ko sa kanya. Wala na siyang utang. Yun na yung bayad ng goods na binili ko sa kanya. So, ganun kasi, ganun yung, ano eh, ganun yung naging situation dyan. Oo. Si, si, tiyan mo, si D, yung creditor ng, uh, yung creditor ng pambayad sa goods na binili ni F. So, creditor siya. At the same time, siya yung debtor based on the note that was endorsed to F. Di ba? O. So? Di ba? Ulitin natin. Si D yung creditor ng liability ni F kung saan bumili siya ng goods. O. Creditor siya. While at the same time, D was the debtor of the note that was eventually endorsed to F. So, in that case, D is, ano, is a debtor and creditor At the same time. So, in that case, anong gagawin mo? Extinguish na. Confusion or merger na yan. So, di ba? Ganun yan. Parang ganito lang yan, di ba? Ginawa natin sa taas eh. O ganito lang yan. Dang, 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 dang. Boom. Okay. Boom. Tarat, tarat. Extinguish. So, ito nilagyan na lang ng intricacies para o. Oh, notes. Tapos endorsement. O, oh, di ba? And may mga additional examples pa dito. So, basically, ganyan yung confusion or merger. Oo. The characteristics of the debtor and creditor is in the same person, is in the same individual, is in the same entity. So, 1276, merger, which takes, place, which takes place in the person of the principal debtor or creditor benefits the guarantor. Confusion which takes place in the person of any of the latter does not extinguish the obligation. So, basically, dito nakalagay lang, same sa sinabi natin kanina, the accessory follows the, oblig- follows the principal and a guarantee O na debt, isa, isa na accessory obligation. Accessory lang yan. Hindi yan siya Prince Epal. O, accessory lang yan siya. Uy, bakit siya nag-boom? Hindi yan siya. Tawag dito, hindi yan siya accessory obligation. Ah, yung guarantee, accessory obligation lang yan siya, hindi sa principal. Parang ganito, example. Oh. Si D, may pagkakautang kay C. Ngayon, sa utang na to, Si G, guarantor. O, guarantor si G. Kung saan, anong minang guarantee, kapag hindi makabayad si D, eh di si, si, si G yung pwedeng habuli ni C. Ganun na yung guarantor. Eh, ginagarantee mo yung utang. So, the merger of the characteristics of D shall free G from the liability as a guarantor. So, same dito. Endorse, endorse. Punta kay F. Punta kay E. until mabalik kay D. So, si D na ngayon yung creditor and debtor of himself. So, extinguish ng obligation na to. Goods na rin si G. O, di ba? Ganyan na sa guarantee. The accessory follows the principal. If the principal is extinguished, the accessory shall also be extinguished. Pero kapag yung guarantee lang yung na-extinguish, hindi masasama yung principal dyan. Tandaan nyo. O, similarly, when person benefits G before, so, accessory obligation, Ah, the extinction, the extinguishment of accessory obligation does not carry with it 
that of the principal obligation. Consequently, merger which takes place in the person of the guarantor while it extinguishes the guarantee leaves the principal obligation in force. Obviously, kasi accessory follows the principal. Palitulot din sabihin para ma-instill sa utak nyo. Accessory follows the principal. If the accessory is extinguished, it does not mean that the principal is also extinguished. Pero kapag yung principal yun extinguish, then the accessory is now also extinguish. So lastly, 1277. Confusion does not extinguish a joint obligation except as regards the share of the corresponding creditor or debtor in whom the two characters concur. So same same lang to sa explanation natin kanina. Oo. Same lang to sa explanation natin kanina. Or na kung saan. Oh, hindi yun. Same lang to yan dito. Yung share lang nila yung mawala pag joint. Pero pag solidary yan, entire obligation subject to reimbursement for the creditors na walang na-receive. Yeah, ito, example. A, B, and C. A, B, C. Joint liable to D. May utang sila kay D in the amount of 9,000 pesos. So, since 9,000 yan, joint sila. So, 3K each yan. 3K each. Diba? So, ngayon, it is evidenced by a negotiable promissory note. So, at later on, itong CD, in-endorse yung note kay E. Mo, in-endorse na yung note kay E. Who in turn endorse the note to A. So, ito, nagkaroon ng endorsement, endorsement, endorsement. Pero kay A lang, in-endorse ni E. So, in this case, A share in the obligation is extinguished. Param, param. Bakit? Because of confusion in his person. He became the oh, di ba? He became the debtor and creditor of himself. Kasi dito, siya yung debtor. Di ba? Siya, siya yung debtor dito. Ngayon, in-endorse ni D yung ano? Yung note kay E. Kung saan in-endorse niya ulit kay A. In which case, dito naging creditor si A. Di ba? Naging creditor si A dito. So, with that, nag-merge yung characteristics, yung qualities ni isang debtor at ang isang creditor kay A, hence the obligation is now extinguished in this case. Pero, since this is a joint obligation, only the share of A. Oo, itong share niya lang ang extinguished. Si B and C, magbabayad pa rin. Kapag solidary obligation naman, eh di in that case, since, ano lang, since the debtors are liable for the entire obligation, while at the same time, the creditors are entitled for the entire obligation, Kapag kahit isa lang yung ano, nag-confuse na merger, boom tarat-tarat. Di ba? Boom tarat-tarat, extinguish na lahat. Subject to reimbursement. So, paano yung mangyari, sir? Like, for example, and yung subject to reimbursement, ganito lang yan. Na A, B, C. Damihan natin, D and E. So, huwag na natin lagyan yung ano, lagyan ng ganito-ganito pa, yung reimbursement lang pag-usapan natin dito. In this case, C, E, and ano, C, A, and E yung nag-confusion or sila yung ano ito yung nag-confusion or merger di ba si A naging debtor and sarili sarili niya so ito with that the entire obligation extinguished ano mangyayari diyan si E since sa yung involved sa confusion or merger ni A boom reimburse sa kay D oo ito namang dalawang to since sila yung naka-benefit required sila mag-reimburse kay A ganyan yan oh ganyan yung confusion merger kung sino naka-benefit o, oh, bayaran mo. Reimburse mo. If, hindi naman, ano, if, ipaparequire ka nila. O, di ba? If, ipaparequire ka nila. Sabi mo, i-reimburse mo ako. Pero, pag hindi ka na pinarequire, siyempre, huwag ka nang bayad. Di ba? So, ganyan lang yan ang confusion or merger. Di ba? Madali lang siya yung dalawa. So, next tayo. Okay, okay, okay. Continue tayo with our discussion. Section 5, Compensation. Ito yung ano, another form of extinguishment or another method in extinguishing obligation, mga kapatid. So ito, Article 1278. Compensation shall take place when two or more persons in their own right are creditors and debtors thou of each other. So yan yung compensation. So meaning ng compensation is basically ito yung extinguishment or extinguishment to the current amounts of the debts of two or more persons in their own right are debtors and creditors of each other. So ito, nagkakaroon ng simultaneous 
compensation or simultaneous balancing ng dalawang obligation kung saan it will be extinguished up to the extent lang in which the amount of one is covered by the other. So basically, ito, may example dito, madali naman compensation eh. Parang nag, kung itatagalog natin yan, kung layman's term yan, parang nag quits sila. O, quits na, oh, may utang ako sa'yo, may utang ka sa akin, quits na lang. O, ganun, di ba? In layman's term. Pero of course, we're talking about law here. So may mga additional intricacies yan, additional complexities to cover everything that may fall under this situation. So, ano, exo, example. A owes B the amount of 1,000. On the other hand, si B owes A the amount of 700. Yeah? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Da, na, 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 na. Singing it. Da, da, na, 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 in, ito mga basic ano to mga basic mga simple basic uh, example so ito in this case both debts and ano both debts are due and payable today here compensation takes place partially kasi nga 1k lang yung utang ni B ah uh, 1k lang yung utang ni A si B naman 700 lang yung utang so para magkakaroon lang ng offset diyan di ba balancing without actual transfer of money so yun 300 na lang yung babayaran ni A Kay B, kasi nagkaroon ng offset. Nagkaroon ng compensation. Nag-quit sila doon sa 700. Di ba? Ganyan lang. Yan yung basic. Yan yung simpleng uh, simpleng instance ng isang compensation. Napaka-simple, di ba? Pero of course, gaya na sabi natin, batas to. So, may mga intricacies yan. May mga additional provisions yan in order to cover situations which will fall under that concept of compensation. Ngayon, napag-usapan ito yung confusion, di ba, kanina? Kung saan, nagkakaroon ng parang, uh, kung saan, yung characteristics, yung qualities ng debtor and creditor na punta sa isang tao. Ngayon, dito mayroon ditong distinguishment between the two. Para hindi kayo malito kung ano yung compensation, ano yung confusion. Kasi nga, di ba, para hindi kayo makonfuse. Tsa, badum, tss. Una, the difference. Sa confusion, meron lang isang taong involved. Kung saan yung taong yon, both the characteristics and qualities ng isang debtor and creditor na punta sa kanya. Pero isang tao lang. On the other hand, sa isang compensation, may dalawang tao. Oo, si principal debt. May dalawang tao. Each of whom is the debtor and creditor ng isa't isa. Kung saan? Si A, in this instance, sa yung debtor ni B. Si B, in this, in this instance, sa naman yung debtor ni A. Yan yung compensation. At least dalawang taong involved with two and that, yung pangalawa, sa confusion, isa lang yung obligation. Sa compensation, dalawa. Ito, ito, ito. Diba? Si A, debtor ni B, dito sa obligation na to. On the other hand, si B naman, yung debtor ni A sa obligation na to. So, sa confusion, isa lang. Sa compensation, dapat dalawa yan. And lastly, Sa confusion, there's impossibility of payment. Bakit? Kasi isang tao na lang yung debtor and creditor, di ba? Ano yun? Magkakausapin uh, niya yung sarili niya para, oy, sige, quit sa tayo sa utang mo. Ay, hindi, sige. Gusto hindi. Dapat kumpleto yan. Pero, kalokohan tawag doon. It is absurd, sabi nga ng batas. Saya, kaya, sabi dito, kapag ating sa ano, confusion, there's impossibility of payment. On the other hand, sa compensation, nagkakaroon ng indirect payment. Bakit? Kasi, instead na magkakaroon ng actual transfer of cash, Nag-offset na lang sila ng kanilang utang. In-offset na lang yung obligation, di ba? So, nagkaroon ng indirect transfer. Kasi kung direct yan, i-deliver mo mismo, nag-exchange sense kayo, di ba? Pero since indirect yan, nagkaroon na lang ng offset. Ito, mga kinds of compensation, by effect or extent, yung total, ibig sabihin, buong obligation, extinguish, partial, eto. 1K, 700. Partial lang kasi hindi buo. Eh. Manatira pang 700. By its cause or origin, legal, kapag it is ano, it takes place by operation of law. Ibig sabihin, provided ng batas. Hindi na nagkaroon ng voluntary agreement between the parties kasi batas na mismo nagsabi, by operation of law, effect agad. Ganon. Si legal yan. 1279 and 1290. Voluntary, ito na, agreement ng parties. Out of their own accord, out of their own will. 1282. Judicial naman, 
when it takes place by order from the court in a litigation, Article 1283. So, dito kay 1279, which is legal compensation to sa mga kapatid. So, sabi dito, in order that compensation may be proper, it is necessary. So, ito may requisites ng legal compensation listed. Una, that each of the that each one of the wait lang may pusa pinasok naman yung kuting dito una that each one of the obligors be found uh, matay na bubulol ngayon ha hmm? ah that each one of the obligors be bound principally and that he be at the same time a principal creditor of the other Yan yung una. Pangalawa, that both debts consist in a sum of money or the things due are, the ma are consumable, consumable goods, mga fungible siguro yan, they be of the same kind and also of the same quality if the latter has been stated. Pangatlo, the two debts must be due. Pangapat, that they be liquidated and demandable. And panglima, that over neither of them, there be any retention or controversy, comments better persons, and communicated in due time to the debtor. So basically, ito yung requisites for legal compensation. And sa legal compensation, as provided in the last paragraph or last provision of this ano, section, by operation of law, automatic HATEPEM mag a yan. It will take effect. Hindi na kailangan ng initiation from anyone. By operation of law na yan. Yan yung meaning ng operation of law. Eh. By operation of law. Once nangyari yung mga conditions, automatic it will take effect. Hindi na kailangan ng initiation from anyone. That is the nature of the term operation by law oper or operation of law. So ito mga explanation ng ano ng requisites ng legal compensation since lima yan sila, yung una, di ba? The parties are principal creditors and principal debtors of each other. Yan yung number one. Ibig sabihin, principal creditor sila, principal debtor. So si A, principal debtor ni B, si B, principal creditor ni A. Dito. Dito naman, si B yung principal debtor ni A. Si A naman yung principal creditor ni B. Di ba? Ganyan. Now, take note, general rule yan. Na kung saan dapat principal creditor and principal debtor sila ng isa't isa. Kasi later on, meron yang uh, meron yang exception when it comes to guarantees. Di ba? Ganyan. Oh, as you can see, yun, makikita nyo dito sa mga requisites, maraming examples. No, di ba? Mahaba yung explanation niya kasi mga example siya. But don't worry too much about it. Chill-chill lang yan ang compensation. In fact, chill-chill lang yan ang, ano, ang extinguishment ng obligation. Chill-chill lang yan. Huwag niyo yung problemahin. Ito, A owes B 1,000 pesos. Ito, example number one. A owes B 1,000 pesos. Si B naman owes A 1,000 pesos. So, compensation will take place because A and B are principal debtors and creditors is other. Yung second example dito, A owes B 1,000. Pero, meron ng guarantor, si C. Dito naman, B owes C 1,000 pesos. So, iba yung ano. nag yung dynamics ng kwento. Di ba? In this case, di ba? Oy. Ba, A owes B. Kung saan si C yung ga... Ah. Kung saan si C yung guarantor. Dito naman, si B owes C. Walang compensation dito. Kasi, hindi naman principal debtor si C. Hindi naman principal debtor creditor si C eh. Pero yan yung general rule. May exception yan mamaya. So tandaan nyo, general rule, kapag hindi sila principal debtor at principal creditor ng isa at isa, then walang mangyayaring compensation. So yan, mga example sa lang ito dito. So read, 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 read. Ito naman yung number 2. Both debts consist in a sum of money and then consumable things of the same kind and quality. So yan yung second requisites natin. Na dapat, it consists of a sum of money or if consumable man sila, dapat same kind and quality. So, kung NFA rice man yan, then NFA rice na yung isa. Kung pera man yan, edi pera-pera. Di ba? Yan yung mga explanation dito. A owes B 1,000. B owes A an electric range worth 1,000 pesos. Walang compensation mangyari dyan. Kasi iba naman yung pera sa appliance na to, di ba? O, ito naman. A oblige himself to deliver to B 10 sack of rice. While B oblige himself to deliver to 10, 10, 10 uh, to A 10 sacks of corn. Na iba naman ang rice sa corn, di ba? Hindi naman sila same kind or quality. So, walang compensation na mangyayari. So, mga additional examples yan dito. Well, simple lang ito sa ano. Ito naman, the two debts are due or demandable. 
So, ibig sabihin, dapat join na naman double na sila by the time when compensation shall take place. Kasi if hindi, eh di walang point magkakaroon ng compensation kasi hindi mo lang pwede i-demand. Di ba? Hindi mo pwedeng i-demand yung payment ng obligation kasi hindi pa naman due. Di ba? Magiging demandable lang yan kapag due. Kapag pwede mo nang i-demand. Eh, pag hindi mo pa pwede demand ano, i-co-compensate mo, di ba? Yung isang utang lang yung pwede mong ano. O, oh, di ba? Ito hindi kasi hindi pa pwede makompensate. Pero take note, yan lang ay kapag legal compensation. Legal compensation. Kasi, baka inisip nyo, say, eh, paano pag gusto ng parties, willing naman yung parties na, no? Na i-compensate na lang kahit hindi pa due and demandable. Yun. Pero hindi yung legal compensation. Voluntary yun. Kasi by out of their own accord na yun. Agreement na lang na. Same with, both debts consist na sum of money or consumable things of the same kind and quality. Kahit na si different kind and quality yan, pero kapag nagkaroon ng voluntary agreement yung parties, then compensated yan. Walang problema. Pero ang pinag-usapan kasi natin dito yung legal compensation kung saan kailangan ng operation of law. Kung saan may operation of law, I mean. Para automatic, ganun yung meaning nun. Pero since hindi yan magiging automatic, o kasi walang operation by law or operation of law kasi hindi legal compensation, then punta ka sa voluntary agreement Oo, sa so voluntary compensation, pag-usapan nyo, mag-agree kayo ng parties na, o oh, sige, kahit na iba tong kinds and qualities ng products natin, ng object ng obligation natin, quits na lang tayo para walang problema. Okay, quits, good. Walang problema. Pero voluntary yun. Well, yun lang. Additional note lang, baka mag- yung iba sa inyo, sir, eh paano pag gusto ng parties nyo? Eh di voluntary, hindi legal. Yun lang yun. Two debts are liquidated, to B, A owes B, 1,000 pesos. B owes A, the share of the latter in a business. The amount of which is still to be ascertained. So, hindi pa alam yung, ano, yung amount na ibibigay niya. So, hindi pa liquidated. So, if the part of the debt of B has been liquidated, compensation shall take place with respect to the part without waiting for the liquidation of the rest. Ito naman. Walang retention or yung pang limang requisite. Walang retention, no retention or controversy commenced by a third party or third person. Anong meaning ito? Ito may example dito. Ibig sabihin walang umepal sa utang nyo dalawa. Walang umepal. Ganun lang yun. Walang umepal sa utang nyo. Sa obligation yung dalawa. Diba? Walang umepal. O A, may utang kay B. Si B, may utang kay A. O yan na, di ba? Kayo lang yan. Bubble nyo lang yan. However, si B pala may utang kay C kung saan si B hindi niya binayaran. So ngayon si C, ginarnish niya yung pagka... Ah, oh, baliktad yun ang lagay natin ito. Ah, hindi. Same. Hindi, ganito na para maayos. Same lang pala. O oh, yan, same lang yan. Inayos ko lang. So in this case, pwedeng habuli ni B Ah, ni B, ni C yung pagkakautang ni A sa'yo. Ni B, ah, si A may utang kay B. Si B naman may utang kay A. So, ito pwedeng compensation to. Kasi, oh, quits sila dalawa eh. However, itong si B may utang kay C na kung saan hindi niya binayaran. So, in that case, si C nag-file ng petition for garnishment or petition for subrogatoria or petition to ano. Basta para ma-make sure niya maputek niya yung interest niya na kung saan makaka-receive siya ng payment. So dito ang usapan, di ba? Dito ang nangyari, pinigilan niya si A. Di ba napag-usapan natin sa previous lecture videos pa na kung saan pwede itong gawin ni C. Pigilan niya si A na bayaran si B. Oo, pigilan niya si A na bayaran si B. Para if ever man na successful sa petition niya against B, yung pambayad ni A, bigay niya na lang kay C. Di ba? Ganon. Or if hindi siya naging successful sa kanyang petition, then wala na siya magagawa. Mabibigay na yun ni A yung pambayad niya kay B. So, ganyan yung, ganyan yung sinasabi dito. Retention or controversy. Diba? Nag-file ng petition si C na kung saan i-retain ni A yung pambayad niya kay B in order to make sure na yung interest ni C from B, di ba? Mapaprotection na niya. Kasi hindi nagbayad si B sa kanya eh. Di ba? Hindi nagbayad si B sa kanya. So yun, habulin niya yung may mga utang kayo, no? Kay B. Para, instead na ibigay nila kay B, diretso na lang sa kanya. So yun yung mga types of cases na, ano, 
na naghahabulan na ng utang. So, bayaran yung mga utang niya. Oo. Oh. So, in that case, since there's a retention, since there co- there's a controversy that was initiated by third party, etong ito, hindi mo pwedeng ma-fulfill yan. Oo, hindi mo pwedeng ma-fulfill yan. Kasi nga, hinabol yan ng third party in order to secure his interest, in order to protect his interest. In that case, since this obligation cannot be completed because it was retained, it was postponed by a third party, you cannot have in a, you cannot do any compensation in that case. Oh, kasi anong compensate mo? Eh, pinigilan ka, di ba? Retention, in order ka ng retention ni court, di ba? Wala ka magagawa. Postpone to. Oo, nakapost yan siya. Oo. Hihintay nyo matapos yung litigation bago kayo may pwedeng mangyari. Bago kayo may pwedeng gawin. Ganyan yan. So, yan yung Ano, pag may ganyan nangyari, may naki-epal, basically, in layman's term, wala kayong compensation na pwede nangyari, magagawa. So, yan lang, ya. Mga requisites ni legal compensation. Pero tandaan nyo, gaya na sabi natin, legal compensation lang yan. By operation of law, automatic mangyari. Automatic will take effect. However, kapag hindi na-fulfill yung requisites yan, it does not necessarily mean na hindi magkakaroon ng compensation. Pwede pa rin magkaroon yan. Oh, ano example, voluntary agreement between the parties. Na, oh, sige, kahit iba yung kinds and qualities ng products natin, quits na lang tayo para wala tayong obligation sa isa't isa. Di yeah, Voluntary yun. Ito, pinag-usapan na dito kay 1279, legal compensation. Ito, 1280 tayo mga kapatid. So, notwithstanding the provisions of the preceding article, the guarantor may set up compensation as regards what the creditor may owe the principal debtor. At yun ang sasabi ating kanina, di ba? Ang general rule, dapat yung debtor, uh, dapat yung mga involved na parties are the principal debtors and principal creditors of each other. That is the general rule. Hindi pwedeng makiepal yung hindi principal Um, o oh, yung mga accessory, hindi sila pwede makiepal. However, that is the general rule. And as we have said, many times already, for every general rule, there's always an exception. In this case, the exception is Article 1280. So, ano meaning yan dito? Oh? Ganito lang yan kasimple, mga kapatid. Ha? Huh? Oh, saan yun? Si A, may utang kay B. 1,000 pesos. Kung saan si G yung guarantor. Ah, guarantor siya. Si A. Ah, si A. On the other hand, si B naman may utang kay A of 1,000-1,000 din. 1K, 1K yan sila. 1K. So, sabi dito na kung saan yung ano, uh, although si guarantor lang is subsidiary reliable, and not principal principally bound kasi accessory lang yung kanyang ano diyan eh involvement din naman sa principal he's given the right etong si guarantor to set up compensation the, the reason is that the extinguishment of the principal obligation as a consequence of compensation carries with it the accessory obligation such as guarantee kasi pag ito na extinguish goods for him di ba goods na goods sa kanya kasi bawas utang eh or bawas utang, bawas problema niya sa buhay. Kasi itong pagiging guarantee, masakit to sa ulo, kapatid. Kasi nag-worry ko, what if hindi nakabayad yung ano, si debtor niya, ako magbabayad niyan. O diba? Dagdag worry yan sa'yo. So maganda na at least, tawag dito, at least, makompensate niya. Papano? Ito may example dito. ba? Diba? Si G, guarantor dito. Kung saan? Ito yung another obligation. Ngayon, ang problema dito, As you can see, ito pa lang, di ba? Pwede mong ma-set up. Pwede mo nang ma-set up, ma-offset. Pero, uh, but if the compensation is only partial and A cannot pay the balance, di ba? Kung partial lang yung compensation, hindi niya mabayaran yung balance, si G will be liable for the said balance. So, nagkakaroon ng compensation kapag hindi na kaya ni Oh, hindi kaya ma-fulfill ni A yung or ng debtor kung saan guarantee si G. Hindi niya kaya ma-fulfill yung obligation niya. Then doon mag-step up. Doon papasok si G para iksa na mismo yung magko-compensate ng remaining balance. Kasi nga, at the end of the day, magbe-benefit siya dyan eh. 
hindi na siya magiging guarantor kasi extinguish na yung primary obligation. So that is the the that is the ano tawag dito? That is the exception to the general rule. Kung saan principal debtors and creditors lang. Pero pwedeng umepal yung guarantors. They may set up the compensation. Tano yun dito? Ay. 1281 tayo. Compensation may be total or partial. When the two debts are of the same amount, there is total compensation. Obviously, understandable. 1282. The parties may agree upon the compensation of debts which are not yet due. Ito yung sasabi natin. Voluntary compensation. Yeah? This, is, this provision of law is an exception to the general rule that only debts which are due and demandable can be compensated. Because that talks about, ito, ilang beses itong sinabi? Legal compensation yun. Pero, oh, di ba? Pero kung gusto ng parties, as long hindi, laba, ah, hindi naman labag sa batas eh, okay, voluntary compensation. Ha? Yeah? Okay, voluntary or conventional compensation includes any compensation which takes place by agreement of the parties kahit na yung, kahit, kahit lahat ng requisites ng legal compensation hindi present. O, oh, hindi na kailangan ng special. Oh, voluntary eh, out of their own accord, out of, out of their own will yan. 1283, If one of the parties to a suit over an obligation has claimed for damages against the other, the former may set it off by proving his right to set damages and the amount thereof. So, ito, base. Ito, example dito. Diba? Si A, may utang kay B. 1K. Ay, bakit to? Kung saan 1K yung utang. On the other hand, si B, nasira niya yung kotse ni A. Diba? Nasira niya. Arr, sira niya, diba? So, ang damages, 800. So, diba? Yeah. Si A may utang kay B. Ito yung unang obligation. Si A may utang kay B, 1K. 1K yung utang niya. On the other hand, itong si B, nasira niya or na-damage niya yung kotse ni A. So, may obligation siya, may liability siya. Yung amount, 800 pesos. So, ito pwede mo makompensate. Oh, wala problema dyan. Compensate mo. Di ba? Pero take note, civil liability lang yan. Civil liability out of, ano? Kasi kapag yung compensation, o oh, kapag yung liability, rose, o, oh, nanggaling sa isang penal or criminal act, <laughs> walang compensation dyan. Tandaan nyo, ito lang ha. Damages against suits. Party civil ano lang. Civil ano lang. Ito naman, hindi naman criminal eh. Hindi naman penal. Di ba? Penal. <laughs> so, ito naman, 1284. When one or both debts are resistible or voidable, they may be compensated against each other before they're judicially rescinded or avoided. Ngayon, itong contracts. Next. Ano pa natin pag-usapan? Second quarter pa. Pero basically, itong si resistible and voidable, they are valid until annulled or rescinded or avoided. Valid sila. Oh, tanda may mga question yun sa board exam. Which of the following is ano is a valid obligation or valid contract? Oh, yan maglagay diyan uh, voidable contracts. Mo oh, maglalagay yung voidable contracts pero isipin niya ng mga ano, trick question yan eh. Isipin niya ng mga students or ng mga examinees. Aba, voidable so hindi to valid. Pero may eh, mali ka. Valid yan. Valid yan until annulled ang voidable and ang resistible. Valid yan sila until annulled, rescinded, or avoided. Oh, tan- ilagay nyo sa isip nyo. Kasi may mga question siya. Which of the following? Oh, which of the following is... Uh, the following are, ano? The following are valid obligations, are valid contracts. Tapos ma- makita kayo voidable. Tapos sila lagay nyo, ah, dito sa valid. Ah, mali na. Kasi voidable, valid yan. Oo, pero may caveat. Valid until annulled. Pero valid. Valid until annulled, pero valid. So, additional notes lang yan. Yan, no? Kaya sasabi dito, kapag yung mga voidable resistible contracts or debts, kinompensate mo before they are rescinded, before they are voided, pwede mong gawin. Etong 1285, don't read this kasi assignment to eh. Hindi assignment yung assignment yung asignatura, assignment yung assignment of rights, mga ganon. Sa ano yan eh, sa, sa sales credit, uh, cre, sa, sa tawag ito? Sa sales credit transactions na yan, nandun yung assignment. And complicated to si 1285. Nakalagay nga dito sa akin, don't read. Ano yan? Don't read. 
Tama ba pinapakita? Ayun oh. So, hindi siya relevant and masyado siyang complicated. So, let's go to 1286. Compensation takes place by operation of law. Ganyan sabi natin. Even though the debts may be payable at different places, but there shall be an indemnity for, expen- for expenses of exchange or transportation to the place of the payment. Read na lang to kasi compensation about expenses to. Not relevant. 1287. Compensation shall not be proper when an- one... Blah, blah, blah. Compensation shall not be proper when one of the debts arises from a depositum or from the obligations of a depositary or of a bailey in commodatum. Neither can compensation be set up against a creditor who has claim of support, support due by gratuitous title without prejudice to the provisions of paragraph 2 of Article 301. Ito naman kasunod niya is 1288. Neither shall there be compensation if one of the debts consists in civil liability that arised from... A penal offense, criminal act. So, pag ganun, walang compensation, kaya nasabi natin. So, instances, basically, ang nilagay dito sa 1287 and 1288, ito yung mga instances kung saan hindi ka pwede magkaroon ng legal compensation. Bakit? Kasi pinagbabawal ng batas. Oo. Bawal sa batas. Bawal lumabas. When one of the debts arises from a depositum. Itong ano, depositum, from the word itself, nag-deposit ka. Nag-deposit kasi isang tao for that person to take care, to safe keep that object. Ngayon, ito, additional notes lang dito. Yung deposit mo sa banko, hindi yan contract of depositum. It is a contract of loan. Additional note lang yan. Tandaan nyo, kahit na sinabing bank deposit yan, hindi yan, hindi yan depositum. Kahit na magkapareho yung word na yan. Because a bank deposit is by its concept a loan. Ikaw, nagpa-loan ka sa banko. Bakit? Kasi kung titingnan mo, anong ginagawa ng banko doon sa perang dineposit mo? ba? Diba? Ano ginagawa niya? Ini-invest nila. O para palaguin. Oo. Ganun mo din naman, ganun ang depositum eh. Loan tawag doon eh. ba? Diba? Kasi tingnan mo ang purpose. Diba? Hindi naman deposit yan para to safe keep lang eh. Ang gagawin nila dyan, ano? Invest nila yan. Papalaguin yan nila. Di ba? Kaya nga binabayaran ka nila ng interest. Di ba? Binabayaran ka nila ng interest on your deposit. So take note. Ano to? Additional note lang kasi dito eh. Bank deposit, contract of loan yan. Hindi yan depositum. Ang depositum, safekeeping and with the intention of returning it to the one who deposited it. So in those cases, to mga example nga, example lang yan. Oh. Where the debts arises from komodatum, komodatum, gato yung susana. So, uh, chill, chill topics and talk. One debt arises from claim when wa- where one of the debts arises from claim of support. Oh, chill, chill lang to sila. Read na lang. So, 1289. Ano to sa 1289? If a person should have against him several debts which are susceptible of compensation, the rules on the application of payments shall apply to the order of compensation. Ah, to. Yung several debts na pwede mo i-compensate. So, alin yung unahin mo? Anong guide ng batas sa'yo? E di yung pinag-usapan natin sa application of payments. Di ba? Yun lang yun. 1290, last one. When all the requisites mentioned in Article 1279, tandaan yung 1279, legal compensation, at present, compensation takes place by, oper- takes effect by operation of law and extinguishes both debts to the concurrent amount kahit na mga parties, the creditors and the debtors are not aware of the compensation. Kasi nga, by operation of law. Ito yung sasabi tayo kanina. Kahit na walang pinag-usapan yung parties, pero sinabi ng batas, operation of law, it will take effect. So, yan lang yun. Eh. Dali lang si compensation. Huwag problemahin masyado. In fact, huwag yung problemahin masyado. Charot. Huh? So, let's go to the next topic. Our last topic for this. Ito bang last? Oh, yeah. Our last topic for this midterms before our midterm exam or before your quiz on Thursday. So with that, uh, so with that, let's go to section 6, mga kapatid. Okay, let's go to our last topic for these midterms. So, yung last topic natin is section 6, novation. Okay, extinguishment of application. Okay, let's go to 91. So, according to Article 1291, obligations may be modified by, first, changing their object or principal conditions, second, substituting 
the person of the debtor. Pangatlo naman, subrogating or subrogating a third person in the rights of the creditor. So those are the instances where obligations may be modified under 1291. So ano meaning nito? Ito na yung tinatawag nating novation. 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 Kung saan nasabi dito, nagkakaroon ng total or partial extinction of an obligation through the creation of new one which substitutes it. So, ibig sabihin, may old obligation. Kung saan, yung old obligation, binago nyo yung stipulations, binago nyo yung provisions, whether that's total or partial extinction, na kung saan, since binago nyo na yung old obligation, di ba? partial or total extinguished na siya, kung saan yung purpose nyo is to create a new one. Yun yung novation. Kasi baka may mga certain, ano, certain facts and circumstances na nangyari, o di ba, mga certain ano, events or updates na kung saan hindi na applicable o hindi nyo na bet yung old obligation. So, napag-isipan nyo na mag na lang. Na gumawa na lang ng bago. So, extinguishing the old, creating a new. So, yun yung basically, ano eh, yung concept ng novation. Now, it is the substitution or change of an obligation by another, which extinguishes or modifies the first, either by changing its object or principal conditions. Yeah? Ito yung mga ano eh. Una, changing their object or principal conditions. Pangalawa, isubstitute mo yung pagkatao ng debtor. So, ibahin mo yung debtor. Iba na. Si old debtor, hindi na siya liable. Si new debtor na. Pangatlo, subrogating a third person in the rights of the creditor. Ito naman yung opposite. Di ba? Sa substitution, yung debtor. Sa subrogation, iba na yung creditor. Old creditor, alis na. Bagong creditor naman. So, yung term ginamit mo. Pag sa debtor, substitution. Pag sa creditor, subrogation o subrogating. Ito, dual function ng novation. Ang novation is a contract. O, kasi agreement yan ng parties na yung old obligation, extinguished or partial exting extinction, for them to be able to create a new one. So, yun yung dual function ng novation. It does not operate as an absolute, but only as a relative extinction because it creates a new one in place of the old one, which is only modified. Di ba? Ito, mga kinds of novation, according to origin, legal, yun ang galing sa batas, by operation of law, conventional, agreement ng parties. Second kind naman is yung according to how it is constituted, constituted expressed man yan or implied. Sa 1292 yan, according to the extent, whether it's total or partial lang. According to the subject, real or objective, ito na, personal or subjective or mixed. Nat balikan natin itong 1291. Yung number one dito, yung changing there object or principal conditions, tawag dyan, real novation. Real novation. Or R-E-A-L. Real or real novation. Yung number 2 and 3, personal novation yan sila. Yung substituting and yung subrogating, personal uh, novation yan sila. Bakit? Kasi titingan mo, sa number 1, anong ginagawa mo? Pinapalit yung object. Yeah? Di ba? Ano ba ang real obligation? Yeah? The obligation to give. O dito, dito. Pinapalitan mo yung ano, di ba? Changing the object or principal conditions. That is a, a real novation. On the other hand, ano pa yung ob personal obligation? Obligation to do or not to do, di ba? Titingnan mo dito, substituting the person, subrogating a third person. Pinapalitan mo kung sino yung party. So that is a personal novation. Ito mga example. Real novation. S agreed to deliver B. A car. Later on, pumasok sila sa ibang kontrata kung saan yung deliver na lang ni A. Na, ni A ni S, instead of a car, 10 air conditioners na lang. So, ito, real novation. Kasi pinalitan nila yung ano, di ba? Pinalitan nila yung object ng ano, ng kasunduan nila. Na-extinguish yung delivery of a car, pinalitan ng delivery ng 10 air conditioner. Personal novation naman, if after the constitution of the... Ah, puto tayo dyan. Di ba? According to subject, real or objective, personal or subjective, and pwede rin mix. So, yun, renovation yun. to personal ovation. If after the constitution of the obligation, both parties agree that C will substitute for S or that D will be subrogated in the rights of B. So, nagpalitan sila. Substitution, debtor yung nagpalitan. Subrogation, creditor yung nagpalitan. Okay? Good personal ovation. Sa mix ovation yun, Mix ni real and personal, obviously. <laughs> so, let's go to 1292. So, basically, yung novation. Yung bago, ah, yung bago, yung luma, nag-agree kayo, papalitan nyo, 
Okay, partial or total extinguishment para palitan ng bago. So yun, ayaw mo na si lupa, so iniwan mo na siya, gusto mo ng bago. Di ba? Ganun. 1292, in order that an obligation may be extinguished by another which substitutes the same, it is imperative that it be so declared in unequivocal, unequivocal terms or that the old and the new obligations beyond every point incompatible with each other. So ito yung sabi natin ano? Ito yung novation according to how it is constituted, yung express and implied. Sa express, ito, when it is so declared, it is unequivocal, un unequivocal terms, yan, express yan. Kasi klarong-klaro, expressly stated, di ba? Klarong-klaro. Yung implied naman, ito, or that the old and the new obligations be on every point incompatible with each other. Ibig sabihin, yung old obligation, hindi mo siya pwedeng gawin at the same time with the new obligation. Incompatible sila. Hindi sila pwede maging simultaneously existing. Oo. Da dapat may isang matitira. And in this case, yung bago yung matitira. So ito, 1292 provides for the requisites of an ovation. May apat na essential requisites tayo mga kapatid. Una, previous valid obligation. Previous valid obligation. Kasi nga, yung old, di ba? Ito yung old obligation. The previous valid one. Pangalawa, a capacity and intention of the parties for them to modify or extinguish the obligation. Siyempre dapat, kung mag-novation sila, dapat kaya nilang, o oh, may capacity sila, they can do that. Yeah. Pangatlo, the modification or extinguish. Nagluto ng pritong manga. Ay, pritong manga. Ibusaw nanay ko. Nanay ko dito. Pangatlo, the modification or extinguishment of the Old obligation, kasi of course, yan yung novation eh. Papalitan mo yung bago ng luma. Papalitan mo yung luma ng bago. And pangapat, ito na, yung end product ng novation. The creation of a new valid obligation. So, yung mga requisites. Novation is never presumed. Dapat it is clear. No? Provided dito sa ano eh. Sa 1292. Dapat it is clear whether it is declared in unequivocal terms, which is express, and or it is incompatible with the new obligation. Yeah? The old and the new are incompatible with each other. That is the implied one. So, ito mga, ano, ito mga, ato, itong next page basically talks about the test of incompatibility between the two obligations or contracts. So, sinasabi dito, yung unang obligation, si S, may test tayo, may test, may test tayo. Dapat, they each can have independ independence, independent existence. Meaning, They, you can simultaneously do them. There's a possibility or it is ano, possible to do them simultaneously. However, if it is not possible, then they're incompatible. And since they're incompatible, then you can say na nagkaroon ng novation. Diba? Ito, example ito. Yung unang obligation, si S nag-agree mag-deliver ng car kay B. Okay. Nagkaroon sila ng subsequent agreement na kung saan mag-deliver ng truck si S kay B. Okay. Una, mag-deliver ng kotse. Yung pangalawang subsequent agreement, mag-deliver ng truck. Okay, tatanong yung kayo. Can those obligations, can those contracts or obligations agreement be performed simultaneously? Pwede mo ipagsabay? Oo. Iba naman kasing kotse sa truck eh. Okay, kahit sabay mo pang deliver yan siyang dalawa, okay, goods lang. So, walang novation dyan. Diba? Kasi they can exist independent of each other. They can exist independent of each other, di ba? Ito namang second example, yung, uh, yung unang kasunduan ni S and B, kung saan, ito yung lupa, di ba? ito yung lupa, lupa yan, ang unang kasunduan magtatayo ng bahay, house. Okay, ngayon, nagkaroon sila ng subsequent agreement na kung saan, instead na bahay ang patayo dyan, apartment na lang, apartment na lang, apartment, o oh, di ba? Ngayon, on the same parcel of land. O, oh, di ba? Unang kasunduan, on this parcel of land, magtatayo ng bahay. Nagkaroon ng subsequent agreement na magtatayo ng, parcel, uh, ng apartment dyan on the same parcel of land. Ngayon, tatanong yung kayo. Pwede bang magkaroon ng, uh, magkakaroon ba dyan ng ano? Pwede ba sila ng simultaneously existing? O, simultaneous performance? Hindi, kasi on the same parcel of land, magtatayo ka ng bahay. So, occupied yan. Tapos, subsequent agreement, magtatayo ka ng apartment. So, occupied din yan. On the same parcel of land. Paano yan? Diba? Hindi sila pwede mag-simultaneously perform. 
So, nagkakaroon ng novation. Yung ano, yung para sa bahay, extinguished na yan. Sa apartment, goods lang. Yan yung bago. Oh, there is novation in this case even in the absence of an express agreement so that the effect because the two obligations are absolutely incompatible with each other kasi because of the existence of being them patayuin sa isang parcel of the same parcel of land. Hindi pwede yun, kapatid. Mm. No, sir. Paano pag on top of each other? Ibang agreement yun, kapatid. O, oh, ibang agreement yun. So, on top of each other, hindi ba sa pwede magkatabi? Iba yung agreement na yun. Ang pinag-usapan ng dito at dito, bahay sa isang parcel of land, subsequent agreement, apartment on that same parcel of land, then contradicting na yun, di ba? Huwag tayo pilosop mo. Mahirap yun. So, let's go to 1290 Novation which consists in substituting. Ito, we're talking now about the number 2, di ba? Yung sub substituting the ano? Substituting. Substitute. Substituting the substituting. Saan? Substituting. Substituting the ano? The person to the author. So, dito tayo sa personal obligation na. O personal novation, I mean. Which is 1293. So, novation which consists in substitute, substitute, substituting substituting a new debtor in the place of the original one may be made even without the knowledge or against the will of the old debtor. So, pa pwede yan. Ni original debtor, pwede mong isubstitute sila. Pwede mo siyang isubstitute. Pero, kahit na against the will or without the knowledge of the original debtor, you cannot do such substitution without the express or without the consent of the creditor. Payment by the new debtor gives him the right mentioned in Articles 1236 and 1237. Yan sasabi. So, we're talking about substitution in this case. So, kinds of personal innovation, as you have said, dalawa. Substitution, kapag deto yan. Nireplace mo. Subrogation, ito naman, sa creditor na to. Pinalitan mo yung original creditor ng bagong creditor. No, ito. Since 1290 talks about yan, no? Substitution, ano yung mga kinds of substitution na meron? Una, si expromission. Pangalawa, si delegation. O delegation. So, si expromission. Yeah. Si expromission or that which takes place when a third person in his own initiative or in without the knowledge or against the will of the original debtor assumes the original debtor's obligation na may dapat may consent ni creditor. So, ang dito, ang kailangan lang ng consent is from the, ano, from the third person na gusto maging debtor and ni creditor. And it is essential that the original debtor be released from his obligation. Otherwise, walang exclamation. Si delegation naman, iba dito. Si delegation dito, yung may initiative para magkaroon ng substitution is yung si original debtor. Oo, no? Delegation or that which takes place when the creditor accepts a third person to take place of the debtor at the instance of the latter. So, si original debtor yung nagano initiate And, kailangan dito ng approval ni creditor. So, basically, sa delegation, unlike sa expromission, sa delegation, yung consent ng lahat ng parties kailangan. Ni original debtor, ni third person na gusto maging new debtor, and ni creditor. Dapat mag sila. So yan na, tingnan nyo ang ano, dito ah, take note ah, iba ang expromission sa delegation. Bakit? Ah, bakit? Obviously naman, di ba? Titingnan mo yung expromission. Sa expromission, as you can see, sino nag-initiate? Yung third person na, maging, na gusto maging debtor, siya yung nag-initiate. Na kahit na against the will or without the knowledge of the original debtor, pwedeng mangyari ang expromission. Ang kailangan lang, approval ni creditor. So, tatandaan nyo yan. Ha? Ina ang nag-initiate, si third person na gusto maging debtor. Di ba? Gusto maging debtor. Even it is against the will or without the knowledge of the ano. Pwede mangyari yan. Ang kailangan lang talaga is yung consent ni o oh, mag-agree si creditor. So, yan. Dalawang consent lang kailangan dito. Yung third person na gusto maging new debtor and yung Ter, uh, si creditor. Sila, consent lang nila dalawa. Goods na ang expromission. But also don't forget the very important one. Dapat uh, 
dapat yung old debtor o yung original debtor must be released from the obligation. O dapat wala na siyang obligation diyan O echapuera na siya. May bago na eh. Innovation na yan eh. So wala na siya. Hindi na siya dapat involved. So yun yung importante. Sa delegasyon naman, kung makita nyo, sino nag-initiate? Si original debtor, si old debtor. Gusto, oh, sabi nyo, oh, creditor, oh, uh, papalit sa akin to, sana yung magbayad ang utang ko. O, oh, di ba, ganun. Kakaroon ng si, uh, si original debtor, si old debtor yung nag-initiate. In this case, tatlong consent na kailangan mo. Debtor, the original old debtor, the new debtor na, na third person, and yung uh, si creditor. And same kaya, no? Same kay... Expromission, dito sa delegasyon, dapat marirelease si original debtor sa obligation. Kasi pag hindi yan siya na-release, then wala rin, uh, uh, then wala rin delegasyon na nangyari. Kailangan marilis sa obligasyon si original debtor. So yan na, expromission and delegation. So, kasi minsan, kasi substitution mangyari, either expromission yan or ano eh, delegasyon eh. Kaya may mga instances na ganun yun nga. So dito, right of new debtor who pays. In expromission, payment by the new debtor gives him the right to beneficial reimbursement under the par- under uh, under the second paragraph of Article 12.6. And if the payment was made with the consent of the original debtor or on his own initiative, meaning delegation, the new debtor is entitled to reimbursement and subrogation under Article 12.37. So ito, ito mga examples. O example, debtor tells C or the debtor tells the creditor that T will pay this debt. C agrees. Pero take note, simple lang yung usapan, di ba? Sabi lang niya, no, de, ano, ang sabi lang na si T yung magbabayad ng utang ni, ni, ano, ni debtor. Tapos nag-agree si C. Automatic ba? Na uh, delegation yan? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi, ang usapan lang, iba yung magbabayad ng utang. Yun ang usapan eh. Iba yung magbabayad ng utang. O hindi nila na pag-usapan o hindi nila na-agree na marirelease si original debtor sa kanyang obligation. Kasi if that's the case, hindi walang, nagba- walang nangyaring novation. Walang new contract. Nagsabi lang na siya yung magbabayad. Walang sinabing marirelease si old debtor. ba? Diba? Nagsabi lang na ah, siya yung magbabayad ng utang ko. Okay. Walang delegasyon dyan. Dapat siya magbabayad ng utang ko and in that case, release me from my obligation. From my obligation. Oh, in that case, okay, novation kayo. May bago? Oh. Delegasyon yan. Yeah? Same rin dito, yung sa second, ano, second example, expromission naman ang pinag-usapan. Pero ang importante dyan, dapat ma-release si original debtor sa obligation para matotally in effect yung expromission or delegasyon. So, 1294. If the substitution is without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, the new debtor's insolvency or non-fulfillment of the obligation shall not give rise to any liability on the part of the original debtor. So itong 1294, pinag-usapan dito is expromission. Bakit? Kasi makita nyo, if the substitution is without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, So you cannot say that that's delegation. Bakit sa delegation ano nang kailangan mo, 'di ba? Consent ng tatlo. Kasama doon si original debtor. Eh, sabi naman dito, eh, substitution is without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor. Expromission 'yan. Kasi sa expromission, hindi mo kailangan ng consent ni original debtor. Kay third person lang na gusto maging new debtor and kay creditor lang. So ngayon ang pinag-usapan dito kay 1294. What if what if nagkaroon ng insolvency si new debtor or hindi niya na fulfill yung obligation niya? Ano mangyayari? Expromission 'yan. Ah, expromission 'yan. Ah, tag ito. Expromission to, di ba? In that case, di ba? Against the will or without the knowledge, hindi mo hindi naging involved si ano? Hindi naging involved si de- si original debtor dito. So in that case, ano mangyayari? Anong mangyayari? Ha. 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 Ito naman provided oh. In expromission, the new debtor's insolvency or non-fulfillment of the obligation will not revive the action of the creditor against the old debtor 
whose obligation is extinguished by the assumption of the debt by the new debtor. So, you know, tingnan nyo. Kasi nga, without the knowledge or against the will of the debtor, hindi naman kagustuhan yan or wala namang involvement dyan si debtor. In this case, ha, kasi oh, sinabi, expressly sinabi na, without the knowledge or against the will. Oh, hindi naman sinabi dito or hindi naman naging involved dyan si debtor sa ginawa niyong expromisyon. Bakit nyo isasama siya pag nagkaroon ng problema? Oo. Hindi naman sinama eh. Kasi against the will na nga. Without the knowledge. Di ba? Bakit nyo isasama yan kapag nagka-aberya na? Kapag nagka-problema na? Unfair naman, di ba? Oo. Against the will na nga. Oh. Ay- ayaw nyo na nga in the first place. Bakit mo pa isasama? Oo. Bakit mo gagawing liable pa? Si nyo debtor na bahala dyan. So that is for both. Both di ano? Both di ano? Both, both, the, uh, both the insolvency or non-fulfillment situation. 1294. Parehong or if either insolvency or non-fulfillment ang nangyari. So take note of that. Kasi pagdating sa 1295, insolvency lang to. 1294, insolvency or non-fulfillment. 1295, insolvency lang. Basahin natin. The insolvency of the new debtor who has been proposed by the original debtor. Proposed by the original debtor. So, sino nag Si original debtor. So ano na sabi natin pag sino pag si original debtor nag-initiate ng substitution? That is delegation, di ba? Who has been proposed by the original debtor and accepted by the creditor. So lahat ng parties nagkaro nagbigay ng consent nila. Ang mangyayari shall not be revived, shall not revive the action of the latter against the original obligor. Obligor. So hindi siya sabi. Uh, except when said insolvency was already existing and of public knowledge or known to the debtor when he delegated his debt. So, ito, ito yung ano. Pinag-usapan natin dito, as we have said, is delegation. And, ang pinag-usapan lang dito is insolvency. Yeah, insolvency. Kasi yung non-fulfillment, oh, if the non-fulfillment obligation is due to other costs, the old debtor is not liable. Insolvency lang pinag-usapan natin kay 1295. So, yung general rule, as we have said sa 1294, The general rule is that the old debtor is not liable to the creditor in case of insolvency of the new debtor. Oh, oh. Lalo na sa previous article sa 1294 kasi walang involvement si new debt si old debtor diyan eh. Pero iba kasi yung usapan dito kay 1295, bakit delegation na to eh? Ibig sabihin sino nag-initiate? Si old debtor. Oo, oh, oh, si original debtor siya yung nag-initiate, di yeah? So, since siya nag-initiate, ibig sabihin, may involvement na siya dyan. Siya yung may gusto mangyari ng substitution eh. So, in, th- in this case, ang sinasabi, okay, goods lang. Pag insolvency, since bagong obligation yan, hindi ka damay. Pero, may exception. Ano yun? The said insolvency was already existing and of public knowledge. Although it was not known to the old debtor at the time of the delegation. O, ibig sabihin, pre-existing na yung insolvency. And such insolvency is of public knowledge. Kahit na, hindi alam ni original debtor na insolvent na yun. At the time of the delega- when the delegation or the delegation happened. Or, the insolvency was already existing. Okay, same. Although it is not public knowledge, si original debtor alam niya na insolvent na siya. Di ba? Kasi in either case, whether public knowledge hindi niya alam, or hindi public knowledge sa alam niya, the point is, dapat may idea siya. O, di ba? Public knowledge eh. Wala siyang excuse. Hindi niya pwede gawing excuse na, ay, hindi ko alam. Public knowledge nga yan, no? Hindi mo minake sure bakit, hindi mo sinugurado na yung bagong debtor, makakabayad. Oh, that's your fault. That's a fault on your part. Yeah? Public knowledge na eh. Yeah? Public knowledge na. Bakit hindi mo minake sure? Hindi ka gumawa ng due diligence mo to make sure na makakabayad yung pinang-substitute mo. Kaya, held liable pa rin siya kahit hindi niya alam kasi public knowledge. On the other hand, obviously, oh, kahit hindi siya public knowledge pero known to the debtor, oh, kahit na hindi public knowledge pero known to the debtor, to the original debtor, okay, alam mong hindi makakabayad, bakit mo pinasubstitute? Di ba? Kalokohan tawag doon. Bakit? Iniiwasan natin tong magkaroon ng fraud. O, oh, magkaroon ng lokohan. O, oh, alam mo hindi makabayad. Bakit pinasubstitute mo? Kawawa si creditor. ba? Diba? So, yan yung pinupunto ni 1295. 1296. 
when the principal obligation is extinguished in consequence of a new ovation, yung mga accessory obligations na to may subsist only so far as they may benefit who did not give their consent. So, basically, anong sabi natin kanina? The accessory follows the obligation. Ah, the obligation. The accessory follows the principal. So, when the principal extinguish, kasama si accessory may extinguish. Pero kapag si accessory lang may extinguish, walang labot yan si principal. Kasi nga, si accessory follows the principal. However, that is the general rule. And as we have mentioned in the previous lecture videos, na kung saan, sabi natin yan, di ba, accessory follows the principals, may exception dyan. Ano? When the accessory benefits a third person who benefits a third person. When it benefits a third person, it subsists. Masasama yan sa bagong obligation, masasama yan sa bagong contract nyo. Okay? Nakalagay dito, may example naman. Masaya na, when the accessory obligation benefits a third person who did not give the, their consent to the novation, oo, who did not give their consent to the novation, then such accessory obligation subsist, masasama yan sa bago nyong, o bago nyong contract, bago nyong usapan, bago nyong obligation. So, 1297, If the new obligation is void, the original shall subsist unless the parties intended that the former relations be extinguished by in any event. So, dapat, di ba? Nakalagay dito, di ba? Isa sa mga requisites ng novation, ano? Di ba? Yung pangapat. Di ba? Yung una, pre previous valid obligation. Pangalawa, capacity and intention of the parties. Pangatlo, modification and extinguishment of the old obligation. Ano yung pangapat? The creation of a new valid obligation. So, walang novation dyan. Kasi yung pang-apat na requisites, hindi natupad. Kasi, oh, when the new obligation is void, di ba? Eh, ang, ang pang-apat na requisites, dapat yung new obligation should be valid. So, walang novation na mangyayari. Ngayon, take note. Void ang pinag-usapan dito. Void ang pinag-usapan. Eh, pa, paano pag-voidable? Oh. Paano, paano pag-voidable? As we have said, voidable obligations are valid until annulled. Valid until annulled. Di ba? Resisible, voidable, valid until annulled, until rescinded. So, kapag <coughs> nagkaroon ng novation, kahit na voidable yan, valid pa rin yung novation. Kasi nga, voidable are uh, valid until annulled. So, yun yung rule. So, advance pa na eh. Sa contract yun, mostly na ano eh. 1298. Ito naman. The novation is void kapag yung original obligation void except when annulment may be claimed only by the debtor on when or when ratification validates acts which are voidable. O, oh, balik tayo sa requisites. Ano yung unang requisite? A previous valid obligation. A previous valid obligation. So, anong punto niyan kapag void yung ano? Yung original obligation, di ba? Yung previous. Eh, di walang novation. Void yan agad, di ba? Boom, alis siya na agad, etsa pwera na agad. But take note, pag na, no, when, uh, except when annulment may be claimed by only by the debtor or nagkaroon ng ratification which are voidable, and since hindi naman yung void obligation, di ba? Voidable yan, annulable obligation, valid until annul dyan. So, ganun lang yan. So, yun. So, 12, uh, 12, 1299, ito na. Napag-usapan natin yung real novation. Napag-usapan natin yung personal obligation, substitution, substitution, substitution. Ngayon, dito naman tayo sa pangatlo, yung subrogation sa personal novation. 1299. If the, orig if the original obligation was subject to a suspensive, ay, wala pa pala. 1300 pa pala yun. So, if the original obligation was sub subject to a suspensive, or resolutory condition, the new obligation shall be under the same condition so masasama siya. Unless it is otherwise stipulated, sabi ng part tayo, huwag na, isa, huwag na natin isama yung, ano, yung suspensive or resolutory condition. Okay, goods lang. Oh. Presumption lang naman eh. Unless otherwise stated or unless otherwise stipulated. So, ito na yung pangatlo, yung subrogation. 
Subrogation of a third person in the rights of the creditor is either legal or conventional. So, dalawa lang meron. Now, the former, which is the legal one, is not presumed, except in cases expressly mentioned in this code. The latter naman, si conventional, must be clearly established in order that it may take effect. So, si legal, hindi pwede ma-presume unless provided sa code or and si conventional naman, dapat clearly established. So, we have said, substitution, debtor yan. Subrogation, creditor yan. So, subrogation is a substitution of one person, the subrogi. In the place of a creditor, the subrogor, subroger, with reference to a lawful claim or right, giving the former all the rights of the latter, including the Right to employ all remedies to enforce payment. So basically, nagkaroon ng oh, nireplace ng new creditor si old creditor na kung saan ang lahat ng rights o oh, lahat ng rights and benefits na ma-receive ni creditor o oh, mapupunta sa ka, mapupunta kay new creditor. Matatransfer lang. Kung baga, nangyari lang, nagkaroon lang ng palitan ng pagkatao. Lahat maintain. Lahat maintain. So, kind of subrogation, as you have said, conventional or legal. Conventional when it takes place by express agreement of the original parties, yung debtor and original creditor, and the third person, which is the new creditor. So, kailangan ng consent nilang lahat. Sa legal naman, it takes place even without agreement. Bakit? It is legal eh. It is by law. So, it is operation of law. O, operation of law. Hindi na kailangan ng agreement sa party. Batas na nagsabi. So, conventional obligation must be clearly established in order that it may take place. Gaya na sabi sa ano, code. And legal of subrogation naman is not presumed except in cases excessively provided by law. So, puto tayo sa 1301 which talks about conventional obligation or conventional subrogation. Conventional subrogation of a third person requires the consent of the original parties and of the third person. So, lahat sila, the debtor, the original creditor, and the new creditor which is third person na magiging creditor, kailangan ng consent nila. Kailangan ng consent nilang tatlo. And take note, dapat papayag si old creditor na yung rights niya against kay debtor, debtor ma-extinguish siya. Ha? Di ba? Kaya nga, kaya nga papalitan yung pagkatao ni creditor. Di ba? Di ba sa ano? Sa substitution, kailangan ng usapan or ng agreement na yung liability o yung obligation ni original debtor ma-extinguish, di ba? Para magkaroon ng valid substitution. Same rin dito kay subrogation. Na kung saan yung old creditor, dapat papayag siya na yung right niya, oo, dapat yung right niya mapag-usapan nila map, uh, in conventional obligation, subrogation I mean, na yung right niya against kay debtor ma-extinguish para ma-transfer yung right papunta kay new creditor. So, kailangan niya ng agreement. Kailangan niya bumayag. So, Article 1302. Ito naman, art, uh, kung si 1301 sa conventional, kailangan ng consent ng lahat ng parties, ng tatlo. Ito naman kay 1302, it is presumed that there is legal subrogation. It provides for the instances. Diba sabi natin, ah, uh, by operation of loto siya, so provided ng batas. It is presumed that there is legal subrogation on the following. Tatlo to sila. O, oh, tatlo. When a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred, even without the debtor's knowledge. Pangalawa, when a third person not interested in the obligation pays with the express or tacit approval of the debtor, and even without the knowledge of the debtor, a person interested in the fulfillment of the obligation, Pays without prejudice to the effects of confusion as to the latter's share. So, sabi dito, as we have said, uh, legal subrogation takes effect because of or by operation of law and hindi na kailangan ng consent ng mga parties kasi ito ay operation of law. Kailangan na ng consent sa, sa tawag dito, sa conventional subrogation. So, yung unang instances when legal subrogation takes effect or is presumed 
Oh, una, when a creditor pays another creditor who is prepared. So, may example dito. May example, may example naman ito. Si A, may utang kay B, 10,000. 10K, with mortgage. Okay, maganda tong may mortgage. Kasi may security ka eh. Security mo, real property. May utang si A, 10,000. Which is secured by a mortgage. O, secured by a mortgage yan. So, kahit kung hindi mabayaran tong 10K, may backup ka, security. On the other hand, itong si A, may utang kay C. May utang kay C, 20K. Pag titingnan mo, sino yung, ang sinasabi dito kaya no, kay number one. When a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred even without the debtor's knowledge. So, dyan. Hindi na kailangan ng consent, di ba? So, in this case, dalawa yung creditor. Si B and C, separate obligation. As you can see, sino yung preferred, preferred obligation dyan? O sino yung creditor that is preferred? O, si B. Bakit? Kung titingnan mo, o kasi titingnan mo sa point of view ni A, alin yung mas magandang bayaran? Niya una. Si B or si C? Si B. Bakit? Kasi titingnan mo, kahit na 10K yan, it is supported by a mortgage. So, mas malaki yung degree of liability dyan. Kasi pag hindi ka nakabayad, aba Diyos ko, mamumortgage yung property mo. O kaya, mas preferred na bayaran tong si B. Kasi, may kasama siyang security mortgage. Si, si naman, ito, kahit 20K to, more than sa 10K, pero wala kang security, so ordinary creditor lang to, ordinary credit lang. So, in this case, yun yung preferred si B. Siya yung preferred. Ngayon, in this case, when this creditor pays B the 10K, oh, bayaran niya ng 10K si ano? Bayaran niya ng 10K si si B. Yeah, bayaran ng 10K si B. So, since binayaran ng 10K si B, masasa, ma, ano, masasobrogate yan. Si C na yung bagong creditor ni A in this obligation. So, ito si A kay C na. And, take note, kasama dito, oo, all the rights will be transferred to C. All the rights will be transferred to C. So, kahit yung mortgage, masasama yan. Masasama yan. So, kailangan ba ng consent ni A dito? Hindi. Oo, hindi na. Hindi kailangan ng consent ni A dyan. Oo, even without the debtor's knowledge. Because, sabi ng batas, kapag may preferred creditor, oo, this creditor pays another prepared creditor For the utang of A, in this, uh, yung 10K, so yan, it will, this creditor will now subrogate the position of this creditor, of the old creditor. Kung saan, hindi lang 20K yung utang ni A kay C, di ba? Masasama na yung 10K with mortgage yan. And in this situation, hindi kailangan ng consent ni A kasi provided ng batas yan eh, by operation of law. Di yeah? Number two, when a third person without interest in the obligation pays with the approval of the debtor. O, simple lang, ya? Third person, walang interest sa obligation. Diba? Diba? A, may utang kay B. Or may utang kay C. Third person, binayaran si C. Diba? Kahit walang interest. But take note in this case. Take note in this case. With express or tacit approval of the debtor. In this case, kailangan ng approval ni debtor. So, kung babayaran niya, ah, nag-agree si C, then tanggal to, bagong ano. Diba? Bagong creditor to. Pag nag-agree to. So, pag nag-agree. Ngayon, sir, may mga instances ba na kahit walang approval ni debtor, pwede mangyari yan? Oo. Oh, Ito, di ba yung una? Ito ang una. Walang, kahit walang approval, walang knowledge, goods lang. Pero ito, pangatlo, ganun rin. When a third person with interest. Kasi dito walang interest. Pero itong sa third instance, when a third person with interest in the obligation pays even without the knowledge of the debtor. For example, ito. Diba? Diba? Tawag dito. Diba? Si A. May utang kay. 
B. Kung saan, guarantor. Si G. Diba? Guarantor si G. So, in that case, si G, ano siya? Third person with interest. Kasi guarantor siya dito. ba? Diba? Kasi dito sa baba, dito, saan na yun? Ito, wala siya. Hindi third person with interest to. Without interest to sa obligation. Ito, oy, nagalaw siya. Ito, may interest sa obligation kasi guarantor siya. Oh, gusto niya mat... Oh, di ba? Kasi anong point of view ni guarantor dito? Maganda if ma-extinguish agad tong obligation para wala na siyang additional na isipin kasi isi... kasi ang inisip niya dito ay what if hindi nakabayad si A? So ako magbabayad niyan. So problema niya pa yan. So ano mangyayari dito? So yun yung problema niya. What if hindi nakabayad si A? So isipin ko pa yan. Ala, Diyos ko. Mahirap maging guarantor. So in this case, ano mangyayari? Inoferan. Inoferan ni guarantor. C. O, oh, inoferan niya. Ano ba? 10K yung utang. Inoferan niya. Sige, babayaran ko yung 10K na yan. Okay, goods. So, nabayaran niya yung 10K. Okay, extinguish to. However, ba? However, ano mangyayari? May bago na. C. A, may utang na kay G of 10K. And, nawala na yung accessory obligation of guarantee. O, masaya na si G. Di ba? Masaya na si G. Hindi niya naisipin to. Kasi binayaran niya na si original creditor para siya na mag maging bagong creditor. Kasi, ayaw, para ayaw niya nang i-worry pa yung guarantee niya. So, diretso na. Extinguish na. Na-extinguish na to. Then, accessory. Palos the principal, extinguish na to. Kasi bago na, oh, binayaran niya na. And, kasama yung accessory obligation of guarantee. So, ito na yung bago. Diba? Yan na yung bago. O, oh, yan na. So, 1303 tayo. Subrogation, transfers to the person. Subrogated the credit with all the rights thereto appertaining either against the debt or against the persons be they guarantors or possessors of mortgages subject to stipulation in a conventional obligation. So basically, sa subrogation na napapalitan na naman basically yung character kung sino yung magiging creditor. So yung mga rights, yung mga intikasis, lahat ng mga pinag-usapan, provisions, nandyan pa rin. Yeah? Subject to the conventional agreement. And lastly, 1304, a creditor to whom partial payment has been made may exercise his right for the remainder and he shall be preferred to the person who has been subrogated in his place in virtue of the partial payment of the same credit. So, pag itong si nyo, ano, example dito, kapag itong si third person na hindi pa, no, na gustong maging new creditor, hindi kompleto yung nabigay niya. Let's say, 6K lang yung nabigay niya dito, di ba? 6K lang. Hindi pa nabigay yung buong 10K. Then, nandito pa rin. Oo. Nandito pa rin. Priority pa rin si old creditor until na mabayaran yung buong utang. So, ganyan lang. Kasi dapat, kompleto yan eh. O, since hindi pa kompleto yung bayaran, sa muna, i-prioritize muna siya. O, yan na. So, yan yung ating discussion for obligation. So, may questions mga kayo doon, hesitate to chat me sa ating MS Teams. O, and long quiz tayo, chapter 4, extinguishment of obligations, sa Thursday, 1pm. Two, mga 2 hours lang siguro yun. So, sa umaga, 10.30 a.m. to ano, to 12 p.m., which uh, quiz tayo sa CFAS. So, with that, pagka next week, ano tayo? Tawag dito? Uh, pagka next week, uh, April, uh, April 14, Wednesday, CFAS, midterms tayo. Topics, lahat na na-discuss. Sa uh, April 17, obligations tayo, oblig obligon midterms exam, topic, entire obligation. So with that, so be ready para sa future nyo. Yeah? Bye-bye. Love you.